Hey everyone, welcome back. Today we're going to be exploring TPU on your Artillery X1 Sidewinder. So let's go ahead and get started right now. After my review of the Artillery X1 Sidewinder, I had several people reach out to me in regards to using TPU on this particular machine. I had told you that this machine does print TPU and it does it very well, however you had to know your slicer settings. So today we're going to examine what you need to know, what you need to do, and what to be on the lookout for when you use your Artillery X1 to print TPU. Now with that being said, let's look a little bit at TPU to see exactly what it is. TPU is a flexible and pliable filament that allows you to create a variety of objects. Now, with that, you can create things such as sculptures. You can create things such as moving parts like treads. You can create flexible items. And you can create your traditional items as well. However, with TPU, the first thing to understand is that it is not a traditional filament. And since it's pliable and since it's flexible, your outcome is going to vary. So during this video, I'm going to be using four different colors of TPU, all of which come from the same manufacturer, Sane Smart. We have our black filament, we have our white filament, we have our translucent green yellow, and our translucent red filament. I do want to preference that although that these are from the same manufacturer and they are all TPU, they do have different chemical properties. So for example, if I take the white TPU, this is opaque. However, when I take a flashlight and I start to shine through it, you're going to notice that it actually becomes more transparent than we originally believed. The black, on the other hand, though, is completely opaque, and even when I shine the light through it, it remains opaque. The other ones, because they have translucent properties, they allow the light to automatically shine through. So, you have to be really careful about what color you're going to use. Just because something looks opaque doesn't mean in the end it's going to turn out opaque. Next, let's go ahead and jump right into the slicer settings for the Artillery X1 Sidewinder. For this to print TPU, I found that 25 millimeters per second gave me the best results. It is extremely slow. However, with TPU, if you try to run it too fast, you're going to clog the nozzle. You're also going to have uneven layer heights, and you're just going to have a huge mess. So 25 millimeters per second was the optimal setting I found. For the nozzle, I ended up finding that 210 to 218 degrees was the best to remain pliable and flexible. If I went a little bit higher than that, it started to make it too solid. If I went below that, it made it too gummy. For the bed, I ended up using 60 degrees because it allowed it to stick to the bed, but it also didn't melt the bottom so that the other remaining layers on top became uneven. I also ended up using a 10% infill. Now, I want to caution you and let you know that one of the most critical settings is your infill. Not necessarily the percentage. All of these items right here were printed with 10%. However, it was the infill setting in terms of how it was going to build the inner walls that determined what the final output of this product was going to look like. So, in many cases, in all the cases actually, with the exception of the larger Gumbies and the handle that I will show you in a moment, they were all printed using the rectangular infill setting. However, with the larger items, I found that using the concentric infill setting actually gave me the results that I needed. So, as you proceed with TPU, please be very careful with your infill settings. That's going to determine whether or not this is a pliable object, a firm object, or a completely gummy object. Okay, so now we're going to talk about some of the results with printing TPU on your Sidewinder. I first want to begin by looking at our simple Unifix cubes. All of these were printed identically from the same exact G-code. The only thing that's been changed is the filament. In most cases, these cubes were printed very accurately, and the margin of error was very slim. However, when it came to the black filament, my results greatly varied. They weren't too incredibly off, but in some cases, they were almost a millimeter off. These cubes are only 20 millimeters by 20 millimeters, so you can see the inherent problem if you're already off by one millimeter in the final product. Another thing I noticed with these cubes when I was printing the TPU with the Sidewinder is that these circles for these Unifix cubes are not perfect circles. When it's prints on its side, these circles ended up turning out to be more of an ellipse. They don't look quite like a circle. And when you go ahead and you test it with an original Unifix cube, it becomes more transparent that these aren't quite circles. And the reason for this is probably because as you start to build the TPU and it goes up, since TPU is a flexible filament, it is going to expand just a little bit as you go up further and the weight pushes it down. 
so those circles on the side aren't as accurate as you'd like to think they are. While they do fall in the range of being tolerable, they're not as precise as if you were to use a harder filament such as PLA or ABS. The next object I ended up printing were these small tracks for a robot that I'm building. Now the tracks on the artillery sidewinder printed very well. They didn't have any issues except for once again when it came to the black. The black track broke immediately upon taking it off of the bed. And the reason why is because the part shrunk and when it shrunk, the movable pieces here ended up snapping off. So the black let me down once again on the artillery sidewinder. All the other ones though, turned out to be very well with the sidewinder. They printed exactly how they're supposed to. It moves, it's pliable. So these worked well. After that, I ended up printing these small little pieces right here. These are for a pencil holder for my students that have a physical disability. The pencil simply slides in through here and they can put three fingers in here for a better grip. All of these turned out really well. They turned out very flexible. The layer heights were spot on. So I was very surprised with this. More importantly, the black let me down once more. Not only because I couldn't slide the pencil through because of the shrinkage, but because the brim itself would not come off without cutting. So the black itself doesn't seem to work as great as I had hoped. The next one that I printed on the Sidewinder were these small gumbies. These small gumbies will give you an accurate depiction of some of the challenges the Sidewinder faces when printing TPU. While they're not terrible, they're definitely not great either. Some of that's because of the actual G-code settings. As I said, in order to print on this machine successfully, you have to do 25 millimeters per second, and that's really slow. But it's not slow enough for something this small that requires this much accuracy. As you can see, the arms on all of the gumbies are nearly mangled and ripped off as if he's been through a garbage disposal. This becomes very apparent with the left hand. If you look at the machine and how slow it has to go, the filament itself is trying to extrude upwards. However, it's not getting enough chance to really cool it properly. You could slow it down further, but you're gonna make your printing times a lot longer. So be aware of that. Now, that brings me to my next point, which are supports. You may have to use some supports when printing TPU on the Sidewinder because of overhangs. In the case of these larger gumbies, if we look at them, you're going to notice this immediately. The supports are not very reliable. They're not very dependable. That's because TPU is so flexible from the get-go. So as the machine starts to build up and your supports start to build up, they become less stable, which means when the machine slightly goes back and forth, it's going to pull that support system and you're gonna have layer height problems. If you look at all of these, you're gonna notice immediately that the right arm on all of these are completely a mess. The layer heights are not accurate, and that's because as it's printing, it's actually pulling that support system with it. So it's actually causing those layer heights to be off center, it's causing them to be off aligned. That's a huge issue for many things because if we look at the red one in particular, his arm looks like it's nearly ready to fall off because of it. The black one is a complete mess because it doesn't even look like it had adhered together correctly. The other ones are better, but not by much because the support system kept shaking along the process. So if you're gonna use supports, be forewarned from the get-go with the Artillery X1 that the supports with TPU are gonna be a problem. You probably want to try to avoid as many supports, you probably want to avoid as many overhangs as possible because they're going to move and it's going to cause the layer heights to shift. Now, the last thing I want to talk about when it comes to printing TPU on the Sidewinder is that infill setting. Once again, all of the items were printed with 10%. Most of these items were printed using the rectangular infill setting, and that was great because it gave it something rigid and it held together nice. Yet for other items, I needed to change it so it was more pliable. So if you look at the Gumbies in particular, these small ones, while they are flexible, they are bendable, they're not as bendable as the large ones, and that's not because these are just larger. That's because the infill was at that concentric. So now I've got Gumbies that can do all sorts of weird things, they're very pliable to that point where I can bend that almost in a 90 degree angle. That's because the inner walls are going vertical only. They're not going horizontal. That means that Gumby here is more pliable and more flexible. 
Now, where it really became noticeable is for the putt-putt handles for the mini golf course that my classroom is building. This was the first one that I printed. Now, the first one here is using a 10% infill, but it's using the traditional rectangular infill. And it's still got some flex to it. It's really nice and firm. This would be a great golf handle for you to get a lot of grip on if you're going to use it with a lot of force. So that's really great. It's got some flex there. Yet when it came to this handle, I ended up using the concentric infill. Now, this handle is just like the Gumby's. It's completely flexible, so it's a lot more mushy. This would be great for some of my smaller kids because it allows them to really hold on that tight because they've got smaller hands. And so this handle came out really, really nice, and that's because I knew what infill settings I needed. I needed the concentric for this particular handle. So please think about that as you use your artillery. Think about what you're going to be using that item for. That will then let you determine which infill setting you need for your TPU. Now, before we wrap this up, I just want to jump back to the Unifix cubes because the Unifix cubes gave us a highly accurate depiction of what this printer can do with TPU. When I went to print the handles, I started out by printing upwards. This was my first shot at it and it printed very nice and it was very smooth. Yet because it was so flexible of a filament, it started to vibrate, it started to shake and eventually the layer heights were starting to get messed up so I stopped it. This was about 83% of the way through. This is the second one I printed, and I ended up having to print it horizontally so it would not do that. But the downside to that was I ended up having a really rough edge right here from laying on the printing bed, and more importantly, the hole right here, just like the Unifix cubes, is oblong. It's not a perfect circle. So when I go and I slide this wooden dowel in for my kids' putters, it goes in there easy but it's a little too easy. So there's some flexibility and it's too loose. However, when I printed this particular handle, I was able to print it vertically and that's because I was using the concentric infill and so the actual nozzle was not going back and forth so much causing the TPU to vibrate. This printed perfectly. This has a perfect circle and I know this because now if I go and slide the handle on, it takes a little bit of force like it should. And so it stays on there nice and firm and it's not going to come off. So there you have it. Those are my recommendations for using the Artillery XWUD Sidewinder to print TPU and some of my observations. If you have any questions or comments, be sure to leave them below. And as always, thank you for watching.